the formidable robot. Hello. It's me, Nikoli again. I noticed that my recent approach in the first incident, that dreaded SpongeBob episode, caught some attention. I should continue on to the other incident, from this day forward, this should be called, the Eldritch SpongeBob Universe. Now, before I continue, I must inform you of some details from that incident. After the episode was cancelled, the four creators suddenly vanished, almost like they were swept from the Earth. Derek Dryman and Rilvertoon and Paul Tibbet reportedly reported that there wasn't an episode named, I Am Sequo to Somnia. Bullshit. I knew better because I've watched the episode with the other staff members. With the context given out of the way, let's carry on with the next events that happened. Two weeks ago, I was working on the recent episode at the time, Black and Sponge. When I received a VHS tape, this tape, this was the tape one of the interns handed to me, they didn't say anything. Curiously, yet hesitantly, I picked up the tape, went to the testing room, and then helped another guy plug the VHS player. After a vignette plugging, I placed the tape in. The title card was oddly different. A gothic purple background with almost cursive letters. Inquilarious. It started at the Krusty Krab. Mr. Krabs was writing something. It seemed quiet, with the occasional sound of scribbling from Mr. Krabs. The doors suddenly open. Arr! Mr. Krabs said, looking over. He thought it was SpongeBob or Squidward but found no one. A skeptical look was shown as Mr. Krabs looked down. Nothing. Mr. Krabs shrugged and continued writing. About two minutes later, a knock was heard at his office door. He got up quickly and looked around quietly. There, sitting on the ground was a Krabby Patty. Mr. Krabs gasps and goes to the kitchen. Boy, why is there a Krabby Patty on- No one. Mr. Krabs looked around, seemingly scared, but remembered it was a Saturday, but also remembered they work on Saturdays. Mr. Krabs took the Krabby Patty and took it inside. He looked closely. It seemed normal and Mr. Krabs was about to eat it, when a gooey purple goo dripped on Mr. Krabs' desk. Arr! Mr. Krabs said, scraping the goo. He sniffed it. Smelt like nothing. Not wanting to waste good food, a loud crunchy but somewhat squishy bite sound was heard. The bubble transition screen was shown, followed by a deafeningly loud burp from Mr. Krabs. <laughs> Whew! That Krabby Patty hit this spot, but... Mr. Krabs groaned. Shouldn't have eaten it all. <laughs> he chuckled. A montage showed Mr. Krabs working until something weird happened. Mr. Krabs' skin slowly turned purple. What the... Ah! Mr. Krabs suddenly let out a yell before collapsing. Loud and ear splicing, transforming, cracking, exploding, ripping, and gooey noises were heard. <laughs> SpongeBob, Patrick, and Squidward all appeared. When it showed the three, Mr. Krabs was replaced with a shadowy blob. SpongeBob spoke, still, that sickening demonic tone. Well done, Patrick. SpongeBob said to Patrick. Soon, we'll have another savior in our sights. Patrick said, in that deep sickening demonic tone. Rise up! Squidward said, his voice sounding like his own voice but with that same sickening, bone-chilling demonic tone. A loud shrill shriek echoed the walls. It was oh so loud, demonic, and accompanied by a loud smash. Then we saw it, and everyone in the room screamed. <coughs> Mr. Krabs had this weird black box covering his eyes, replaced with multiple red eyes. He had a stitch across his body and stitches on his mouth, but his arms and legs were replaced with tentacles. We tried taking a picture of it, but the camera at the time died, so it was too late in taking a picture of this beast. 
SpongeBob approached, so did Patrick and Squidward. Rise up in Quilirius! Rise up, and together, we shall take over Bikini Bottom! Squidward said. <laughs> As SpongeBob and Patrick both laughed, both equally sounding demonic, the episode ended with the beast, now known as Inquilarius, giving off one more shriek and jump scaring the viewers before the credits were shown. We thought it was over, but the credits were butchered. The credits were done horribly and unorganized, the music sounded like someone badly playing the credit song, and at the end, the screen glitches with an ear-piercing beep before cutting to black. Now, people were more furious, so was I. I took out the tape and we all marched to one of the animators, Marcus Jaromsky. We told him about the tape and asked him what the hell he and the animators were thinking. Marcus brushed it off, saying that we were delusional. We demanded answers and we wanted them now. Accordingly, we finally got context, it was from Andrew Overton. Also accordingly, during the period of getting box office money from the Spongebob movie, someone at the storyboards made a sequel to the last episode I Am Sequel to Somnia, and passed it off as the episode I was working on, Black and Sponge. The directors this time were Aaron Frankshaft, Krobin Sonofont, Karen June and Darren Popper Fanoski, for recruits for Nickelodeon Studios who worked on separate cartoons and theme songs and their logos for said cartoons. On June 17, 2015, the episode's tape was trashed and later picked up by the CEO of MTV, Drake Pearson, who later died unknowingly after watching the episode. To this day, the tape remains in the trash bin of a defunct Kmart store and remains there ever since then. We're only just beginning on this venture. Once you step your toes in, you've plunged into the depths of Eldritch Hell.